I don't normally do unboxings. I've done a couple. I've done the Parrot drone, which is quite successful. I've done a few reviews, CTX3030, which is a little bit controversial, and I've done one for a microphone, but I don't do many of those kinds of videos. But today, I'm gonna to do an unboxing of something rather special. I'm gonna do an unboxing of the Noctar Invenio, and in due course, I'm gonna do a review. Now, you may or may not have heard of this detector, but it's a dream detector. It's a detector that gives you a 3D picture of underground and can detect to the center of the earth and it's an amazing piece of kit if it does what it says on the tin. It's also 10 grand. Now that's a big nut. That's a big big nut. Even for me that's a lot of money. So I've held off getting it but I've decided that as I've got access, potential access, to three hordes that I need this piece of kit. So I've bit the bullet, I've bit the bank manager and I've got it. So I'm going to unbox it for you so you can see what's inside and see what you get for your 10 grand. So there it is, the Invenio in its shipping package. And as you can see, it's a big old thing. It's a very big old thing. And what's more, it weighs a ton. And that's not good, because I like really light things. Heavy detectors, like the old CTX, might be a great machine, but you know, 15 minutes and I'm a dead battery carrying that thing around. So. We will see, but I think there's a lot of heavy boxes in there, like carrying cases, etc. But it is a big old machine, but it is specialist. It is for finding those deep hordes. Oh, that's how I take it anyway. And let's face it, if you can get two or three feet down and you can see a pot of gold coins, it's worth every penny. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to use it to get to those hordes that I feel are there. And I've got three to go for. So I'm hopeful. I pumped it out 10 grand, so with a bit of luck, I might get some of my money back, if it works. And we will see, because I'm going to be testing this on a beach tomorrow to see whether it actually does the job. And frankly, it seems like a miracle machine to me, so I'm quite prepared to be slapping my head going, what was I thinking? I just knew this blooming thing wouldn't work. But if it does, it's going to be awesome. And I'm going to open the box and we're going to see what's inside. And maybe even if I can actually pull it off, I'll assemble it because it's bound to be in bits. They always are. And we shall see what you get for 10 grand. And then later on in another video, we'll see if it works. And if it works, how it works. And if it works, how good it works. And I must say, I'm going to try it out on pretty tricky terrain on a beach, which I reckon for this sort of machine is probably the nightmare scenario. But I'm not going to become an expert on it. I'm going to test this machine as a complete muppet because, let's face it, when we get a detector, we're a complete muppet with how it works. And most of us never actually get to anything clever like reprogramming it or doing anything smart. We just use the standard presets. And that's how I'm going to take it. And we'll see. If you can put up with me, it's going to be a great machine. If it falls to bits, well, you're going to see it happen in front of your own eyes. But anyway, if you've got a haul to go for, it all makes perfect sense because, you know, that is the El Dorado, the bucket list thing that we all have, finding a hoard. And this is a machine that will do it, if any machine will do it, if it does what it says on the tin. Because it reads what I take it to be two or three feet down for certain large objects and will give you a 3D picture of what's under the coil, which is, you know, just sounds magical to me. And we're going to find out pretty soon. It's blooming typical, isn't it? Out where I put that box just a moment ago, there's now a, a noisy bugster chatting away on a phone at the top of their voice, making it completely impossible to film. So I've brought the box in here and we're gonna open it in here with my dangerous knife. Oh yes, dangerous knife. You need that for an unboxing. Well, actually now I've got some hush. I can do it here. So first of all, we're gonna take it out of his outer wrapping. Uh, the dangerous knife is not doing a great job. I really do. My dangerous knife has failed me. I'm gonna to need to get a more dangerous knife. So here is my more dangerous knife. Maybe not. <laughs> there we go. Don't wanna get in the shot. Almost.
So here is the box. So this is what it looks like once you've got it out of the packaging. And thank heavens it's got wheels on it. Yay! I hope it's not too heavy. That's a formidable box. And we're going inside to get out away from the noise. So this is the box the Avenio comes in. And it's a beast. But thank goodness because I will be able to carry it around like when I go on a train, etc. And you're going to need to travel around with it and you really don't want a heavy thing that you can't carry properly, so that's really good. So there's a nice handle there. Oh, there's a lock here. Oh, that's a bit fiddly, but never mind. Need two hands for it. So the handle goes down like that. And it goes up and locks like that, so that's really good. And there's wheels down there. And even grommets, or whatever you want to call them, little legs, so you don't scratch your Georgian dinner table when you put it on it. So let's go inside. So there's a box lock here. Yep. Good, lummy. Oh, there you go. That's how you do it, not that, that. And there must be one on the other side, one would guess. And there it is. And now, that's a hinge. So it's going to be opening from this side. That's the Sherlock Holmes in me coming out. Oh, what's this? Does that, does that do something? Do I turn that? Do I push it? Do I pull it? No, you don't. There's two more locks that I didn't see. You see, this is the idiot's guide to the metal detector. Let's unlock this one then. There you go. And this one. There you go. And you can padlock this, which is useful if you're operating in dodgy areas. And there she blows. Oh, look at the size of that coil. Now, that is a coil and a half. Yeah! Oh, I can barely lift it. Not really, but it's big. It's heavy. And it goes clunky bank when you have to put it on the floor. So here is got to be the power supply, right? We would think. Oh. Before I do anything with that, does it, oh, that's more like my kind of coil. Yay, baby coil, light baby coil, we like you. Excellent. And this, which apart from being more packaging that's going to drive me nuts, must be the power supply. That's my guess, anyway. The umpteenth USB cable. I must have hundreds of those. Plastic pouch. Power supply. Connector of power supply. Strappy thing. Pouchy thing. Pouchy thing? Modern fashionable male underwear? Don't know what that is. Nuts and bolts, we know what that's for. This is to screw the coil onto the shaft, I would guess. Strappy thing. Okay, so, pouchy thing. Lots of accessories. I don't like clobber, really. But anyway, it's there. I'm not gonna complain. Who knows, it might actually be vital for the operation. That's normally what happens. I go, oh, who needs this rubbish? Throw it away, and then you can't operate the blooming thing without it. That's the story of my life. But anyway, back into the box. Well, cable thing, chuck it down with the rest. And this is the, another strappy thing. Now, whether that's for the magic box or for the detector, I don't know, and I'll find out later. Headphones. Good old fashioned non wireless headphones. Now, I hope it operates without headphones so you'll be able to hear it when I'm actually videoing it, but if not, tough luck. So, anyway, headphones look nice enough, light plasticky, as you kind of would expect. Anyway, I'll try them on in a second and see if they're comfortable for my elephant flapping ears. What do you reckon? Would I look great on public transport with these? It's the latest thing. So now we are getting to the good stuff. So this is your 
Ooh. Now the thing is, I'm gonna have to break down the detector every time I want to take it anywhere. Well, that's a pain. I suppose I don't. Ooh, we really have to. Oh, come on, Ow, come, come on. So this is the machine. Pulse rifle in the 40 rot range. Do you remember that movie? Uh, I do. I'm old enough. Okay, so this is the gadget, and it's definitely plasticky. I know people don't like me saying that, but you know, it feels like a sort of toy plastic, a kind of paintball gun plastic. But I don't care if it sees three foot down and gives me a picture of my hoard. I don't care what it feels like. It could feel like wet spaghetti as far as I'm concerned. Oh! Look, that bit just dropped out the back of it. This must be the battery. Hmm. Apparently it lasts 10 hours. Don't believe it. Don't believe it at all. But anyway, that's what that will be. And it fell out the back of here. Where it's meant to live. So there's my... Pulse laser in the 40 watt range. And there's two more items in here if I look at one, maybe three. Or maybe more. Oh hold on. Far more and more. Ooh. Metally shaft banging noise. So there's a bit of the shaft. And there's another bit of the shaft. So that must be for the small coil. No, maybe not. No, they look like they're together. So there's the shaft. There they go. Mystery box. Ooh. Ah! So this is the bit that goes on the end that stops your battery falling out. That makes perfect sense. And it's clippy together. And that's a sort of waterproofing bit. Yeah. Waterproofing bit. You're not meant to go in the water with this, are you? I don't think so. Probably drag you under this IV. But anyway, so that goes with the pulse laser in the 40 watt range. Bag, mystery bag. Now this, ooh, mystery bag. Now this is the magical control unit. That it's basically metal detecting TV. So let's see if we can get this out of the bag. I'm doing this all real time, so you don't think I'm faking it. That was a joke, by the way. Never mind. I thought it was funny. Even if you didn't. So, ooh, there you go. That is what it looks like. Now, I don't know whether it's, it's got protective material on it. But I don't like protective material. I don't like to protect my kit. I like to break it and get it all dirty and scratched. But there it is in its little bag. Now, I'm going to stop now and take it out of his little bag so we can see what it's like outside of its carrying container. There's a screw on bit here. Am I meant to take it out, I wonder? I'm not going to take it out till I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it might be a long time then. And finally, what have we got in the mystery pouch? So here we go, the mystery pouch, which is a bag of mystery items. Cable, ah, this is the magical, this is where you are in the world, kind of GPS-y kind of thing that's, that actually maps as you're moving around. So you strap this onto the coil, and this tells, this tracks the coil basically around the ground and helps you put together that marvellous three dimensional picture, which I'm still um, <laughs> only half believe. And that would appear to be it. This is the Noctec Invenio, and this is what's in the box. In the next video, I'm going to try it out an idiot who's never used it before on some pretty harsh metal detecting terrain and see how it performs. I've got three potential hordes in Europe. And this is what I paid $10,000 for, so I can get a machine that can maybe find them a couple of foot down. And we will find out whether this is the miracle device I'm looking for, or a $10,000 bust. And there's this, this is the book of words. And I'm sure, like all manuals, it's absolutely no use at all. And really, really won't help me much apart from saying, put the screw on the bolt and twist. Um, but nonetheless, it's better than now, and I'm sure there's some more stuff on the interwebs which will be able to help me put this thing together. And I will do that now, and I'll show you it. So this is the shaft. And this end will connect to the metal detector, I'm hoping anyway. And this is where the bottom end of the shaft goes into the top end of the shaft. And there's a lock here. And that locks it at the height you want it to be at. And there's a lock under here for the other part of the shaft. And that other lock for the other part of the shaft 
is for where the tracking gizmo is going to go on, I guess. In any event, it's an affixing point. And we'll find out where it affixes to in a minute. Actually, I think it affixes to here. So, yes, there's the shaft. And this connects with the coil through here. And this locks that shaft in with this lock here. So I'm going to put all these together now. And I'm going to put the little coil on because that's what I'm going to test it with. Because obviously it's much easier to work with these things when it's lighter and smaller and more nimble. So this is the affixing kit. These two rubber grommets go on either side of the shaft and fit in here. And this goes through and goes through the coil and this screws on the end. All this goes on and through here and through here and holds the coil on. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put the coil on the shaft. Now the cable goes up through this slot here and out the end and affixes to the metal detector. Now I've found with other metal detectors, and the manufacturer will remain nameless, they haven't necessarily got this bit right because the rubber widgets don't quite fit and this doesn't quite fit through here, it's very difficult to line up, these screws are a bit wonky, but Noctis seems to have got it perfect. See this is to put your thumb on, so while you're twisting it that way with one hand, you're holding it down with the other. So that's really rather good, I rather like that. So that was very easy to put together, which is unusual, so I'm very happy about that. It's a small detail, but I suspect I might have to be taking coils on and off quite a lot. What I really need, I suppose, is another one of these. I can just put that on the detector coil and leave it be, and not have to mess about. But, oh well, never mind, not a big deal. Now this cable is going up here, and out the other end, and attaching to the detector. So here it is, poking out the other end. There's another detector on the market. We have to pull it through with sort of like a plastic bootstrap thing because it's on a stretchy cable. And this has got none of that. It's just poking out nice and easily. So that will screw into that and that will lock into that. And then we'll be ready to go the next step. So these two halves are now going to go together. So here it is, put together with the shaft. And now we've got more to put on it still. We've got to put the tracker on here. And once you put the tracker on there, we then got to play around with the control box as well, which is a whole new bag of nails, which I have no idea how to operate, but uh, we will learn. It's coming up. So this is the IPT unit, IPTU unit, I beg your pardon. And this is one of the secret weapons of this detector. And it tells you how high you are off the ground, how fast you're moving, etc., etc. It's kind of like an accelerometer and altometer, etc. And that's what enables you to map what's under the coil. So this is the magic bit. Now it's rather unnerving because on it, it says, keep the surface clean, well that's obvious. Do not use chemicals for cleaning. Do not expose this side directly to sunlight. Well, mm, there's plenty of sunlight where I am and you could easily do that. So that's a bit unnerving, but I'm gonna have to be a bit careful. And I think really this thing has to be broken down every time you stop using it, which is also not ideal, but it's a special device for a special purpose to find hordes. It's not your average run around your average to go down to the beach, try to find gold rings with, it's a bit more to it than that. Which you'd expect, so I don't mind that. It's just slightly unnerving when your 10 grand bit of kit says, please don't put me in direct sunlight. <laughs> uh, let's see how that works out in the long term. And also, this thing's gonna easily get scratched, I think, so I'm gonna need something to put over it. But this is bleeding edge stuff, so you can't really expect it to be any other way. Now, another thing I realize is this really really vital bit of kit here also makes it difficult for you to lie the blooming thing down because I don't know about you but when I've got treasure and I want to dig it up I sling my detector to one side or at least I just put it down but I can't put it down on that because that is delicate and that is a natural place it's going to rest so that's going to be a challenge and I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that but something will have to be done maybe I just have to lie gently on its side or something but I'll just be a little bit more careful I think this detector will park on its side it's actually not too heavy I mean, I'll tell you about that after an hour or two with it, but it doesn't feel too heavy, so that's really good. So very light for what it is. But the other box is pretty big, and it's also going to add a lot of weight as well. So let's have a look at that. So this is the control box, and it comes in this plastic protecting bag. It seems to be bolted on in some way by this thing. And I don't know what this thing's for, but I will tell you later when I look at the book of words. I don't like this. don't like it. No, but maybe... It has to be in it. I don't know. So I'll have to learn 
up on this and see how it works. On and off button. Yes, well, that's what I need. Oh, it came on. Macro Invenio. If it says it wants to upgrade, I'm going to scream. Oh, it's loading. So this is going to be a computer in here, isn't it? Well, so this is going to have a PC in it or something similar. Booting for the first time. Well, with me anyway. There you have it. A complete unboxing of the Invenio. And soon, I'm going to be testing it in the field and we're going to see how I get on with it. It's going to be a complicated bit of kit for sure and I'm probably going to make a complete idiot of myself for certain. But if it works, we're going to get some very, 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 very interesting finds. And with a bit of luck, some real serious treasure. Oh yes, I can't wait. After all, when you pay 10 grand for something, it's really got to do a pretty amazing job. Fingers crossed, we will see. The Nocta Invenio, an amazing bit of kit, so it says on the tin. If you want to see how this amazing bit of machinery actually works in the field, how it actually performs, whether it actually does what it says, you better subscribe. You don't have to like, you can dislike if you like, but if you want to actually be informed when the review goes up and be one of the first people to see how this machine actually works with a klutz like me operating it, and a klutz like you perhaps, I mean after all we're all not technical geniuses now are we? So. We're geared up for treasure hunting war with the Nocta Invenio. We're going to a beach to test it out and I've set it all up, I've got it running indoors and it didn't say, please upgrade me for the next two hours via the internet. So it's apparently ready to rock. This is interesting, that's a bit of a pain. The detector itself, that's fine. So it's gonna be interesting to see, but as I said earlier, as far as I'm concerned, this is for finding cords. So a little bit of uncomfort, a little bit of weight, a little bit of only being able to do it for an hour or two before you fall over. Exhausted, noisy bugsters. That doesn't matter because you're going for a hoard, you know roughly where it is, and this is the kit to find it. Now we're gonna find out whether it is the kit to find it by going on a beach and giving it a test run. So come along with me and find out more. Okay, I've used this machine for approximately six seconds and I can tell you I'm already convinced. I put my digger on the ground and I swiped it over with the coil and wow. So there is my digger and I hope you can see that and that's what the screen says. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm totally convinced. Now obviously that's a bit of a snap judgment but I was 95% expecting to have bought a machine that just didn't do what it said it did and now I've just tested it with the digger it's providing exactly the sort of result I would expect from a machine that's going to do what I want it to do so end of review right there well not quite but anyway the setup has been incredibly easy and I would expect it to be really difficult and complicated I mean it looks difficult and complicated doesn't it that's the magic that's the bit that's hard to believe going over that scoop I'm getting this visualization and that's not even the next part which is analyzing things which I haven't got to grip with yet. So you see that, I mean, that's just the magic that I'm paying $10,000 for, that 3D visualization or something. So it's working, it does what it says on the tin. How deep that is, I don't know, but that's the magic and that's what I'm here for and that's what it's given me within a few minutes. Now, the other interesting thing about this is it's very easy to set up. It's very easy to get going and you can see by the clobber I've got around me, it looks like a very complicated way of going about things, but actually they've got it so it's quite simple. So that's really rather good. Now, of course, finding a giant scoop on the surface is one thing, but finding something underground is another. And I'm not really expecting to be disappointed there, but let's go and do that. This beach, though, is heavily, heavily metal detected, so I'm not necessarily expecting to find much. But this guy is. You're going to do your digging for me? Thanks very much there. Is there anything down there? I don't think this beach has much on it because it's basically detected by a horde of people from around here. I buried a dime at about seven or eight inches and this is what I get. So I'm picking it up at that depth it's quite sensitive to that and I think this detector has to be moved quite slowly. You can't just flip it around like I would say the Deus, but I don't know whether the Deus would pick a dime up at seven or eight inches in sand, in dry sand on a beach, which is 
really hard work for any detector unless it's a specialist device. So that's quite nice, that's quite interesting. So we push it on, but my arms have already fallen off. I suppose I've been trying to do it about an hour and a half now and my frail body has had enough, but it's doing what it says it should do on the tin. The only question is depth. Uh, and that's because as I'm up it, I really don't know how to tune it properly. I've ground balanced it, etc., and done various things, but I'm sure there's all sorts of bells and whistles you can do to get on with different environments and get different depths. With a shortage of actual targets to go for, it's a bit hard to know really what's going on. But so far, I'm really excited because I think if this has got the depth, which I'm pretty sure it has, then this is going to find hordes for me. So we're going to do a bit more. And if my arm finally falls off, this is probably all you're going to get to see. So the initial response is, this is the real deal. It works. It's not difficult to use and it finds stuff and it does do the maps like it says it does. So that is really, really exciting because that's what I paid the 10 grand for. And it looks like I got what I paid for. Can't be bad, huh? Just got to get it over those hordes, but we'll see. That will be coming up later. This beach has been done to death and there's nothing on it at all, nothing on it at all. And if it wasn't for the fact that I could put my own coins down and test it and I could immediately find my own digger in 3D, I would wonder if the detector works at all. But I have detected this beach a few times and it is very, very scarce here. And you can see YouTube videos of people detecting it to death. So I put three coins down and it does what it says. It detects all three of them and tells you where they are and separates them all out. So let's have a look at me doing it in practice rather than just talking about it. So they're down here. There's one there, you could probably see it. There's another one there. And there's another one there. And that is what you see on your screen. Three coins. Now you can go in and you can refine... Oh, I found another coin. And you can refine that and it will show you three little dots. So let's do that, shall we? And the way you do it is you go into scan mode and it will then <laughs> so that is scan mode and when i press ok it will process that and there it is processing it and there it goes three little round objects it says and it's probably telling me how deep it is, but I have no idea where to look for that just yet. Now, you must remember that I have got a manual. I've never used this thing before. And I'm just playing it by ear, pressing buttons and being a Muppet, you know, like you do when you get a new machine. So it is very, very easy to use, or at least very easy to use. It's not a piece of technological magic that you need a PhD for. And it does work, does do what it says on the tin. The only thing I haven't proven yet is just how deep it is. But it's interesting that my digger, who my bearer is carrying, did set it off at about 18 inches to two feet actually probably more like three feet in fact so it will apparently in air at least get objects two to three feet away so that's useful but maybe not so useful if you're lugging your spade around with you but anyway be that as it may the only thing that i haven't tested it out for is depth now i did get a uh, penny at about eight inches which i planted and when you think about an american penny it's a bit of steel and it's a bit of copper so that's pretty impressive in salty sand which is quite mineralized but you would expect that from a detector of any quality <laughs> on a small sample it's delivering the goods so that is very very exciting i'm excited i'm very excited hey we got a signal on the signal free beach yay so here we go first signal it's reading in like I suspect to be a piece of tin or a ring pull, but it's getting it and have a look. So that's what it's saying about it. And it's saying it's 55. And I'm guessing that means it's shallow. I don't know how deep that's going to be. Depth. Depth. I think it's saying it's, I think that's the depth, and it's saying not much depth. So it's there. So my digger, my digging person is going to dig now. Get a big scoop, real big scoop. Yay! The first ring pull, the first find 
of my $10,000 detector. And it did tell me it's going to be a ring pull, and it did tell me it's going to be shallow. What more can you want? Depth, 3D map, differentiation between targets, and a clear sign you've got a ring pull. The only thing I need it to be is about four pound lighter, but you can't have it all, can you? Now there is a fantastic spin-off from this machine, which I don't think is meant to be a fantastic spin-off, but it is for me, because it's telling me how much I'm missing, and it's telling me if I'm going too fast, effectively. In really good territory, that's really good, because it's telling you you're going too fast, and you're missing bits, in fact, missing a lot. So when I'm going normally, this is what this detector's telling me I'm missing, and it's kind of sad. I mean, look at that. And I'm not really swinging it totally wildly, now I'm swinging it really carefully and in fact this is kind of orientated with like a compass so I need to get it oh there we go oh I'm going back to the front now so I need to go around here so I can show you right I'm going this way so to get the whole picture I really have to be going gently to not miss anything and for that matter low and slow which is the way to get all the good stuff of course well, you can see I'm kind of missing stuff already, but I'm going low and slow. But it's telling me whether I'm getting it or not. Now, I would normally go like this. You can see I'm not really getting much, am I? Now, probably not going that mad normally, but something like that. This will enable me to cover every square inch when I'm treasure hunting, and that's really valuable. This machine is telling me how I have to swing to get everything. Obviously, in any old site, we don't know where you're going. It's a playoff between how fast you go, because you're prospecting, and how much ground you cover. You don't want to cover all the ground. If it's barren, you want to sample, and you go fast for that. But if you're in a good spot, you want to cover every square millimetre. And this machine will help you do that, and that's a really big win. And that's kind of like, you know, well, maybe not accidental, but it's not <laughs> sold as improve your metal detecting with the 3D visualization. And for me, that function that will enable me to cover every square millimeter, because I've got lots of reasonably good sites, is a really good bonus, very valuable bonus indeed. That's another fantastic thing about this detector. <laughs> Happy. We're on to actually quite mineralized ground now, which is why I've been avoiding it. So I've got a find, which will probably be because other people's metal detectors don't like this, because it's near a sort of campfire area. Here it is. So it's saying seven centimeters and it's in highly mineralized ground and it's saying it's a um, 86 which means highly conductive so it's probably a bit of aluminum in the minimum where was it nicely i can refind it on the screen so mr digger could you please extract so right in that hole a little bit of lead there yeah it drops through right so this is what it was a bit of aluminum at four or five inches well at nine centimeters it said so it must be true that's what you'd expect when everybody's having a party and burning stuff lots of burnt aluminium anyway on we go well it's making the finds ring pulls it does find little objects too that was about four or five inches as you'd expect so nothing spectacular but it did go crazy when it went over it which you would expect for something that's got depth just recorded it gave me a big 3d signal for it gave me a number that said aluminium we dug it there it was aluminium at about four inches i'm making my way back now because i'm tired out and this beach doesn't have much on it and i expect to find more aluminium and nothing else but it's good to use it just to get some experience because when i come back i'm going to be on some proper sites and i want to be in at least basic command of this machine and that's what a ring pool looks like in really mineralized ground i don't know if you can see it but this ground is actually kind of gray from all the burning and from all the charcoal so this is really difficult ground so that's quite impressive that is not bothered by it at all now i think this is discriminating out foil because i got a foily signal or rather i got a broken signal with a high tone but it wouldn't behave itself and then when i dug it up it was foil 
So that makes sense in a way that this might actually be very good at picking out foil and giving you the right signals to show that it's foil. And that would be a boon for me because I'd dig nothing but foil. So that's interesting, but we'll find out later when we're on some European fields whether that actually is the case. But here, it just really gave me a signal that if I got that four or five times in a row, I would then start thinking about not digging it because it just had a foily feel to it. So it's good to have a detector that will say to you, no, you don't want to dig that up. That's rubbish, that is. So we shall see, but that's an early indication. That's also another nice thing that this machine possibly does. So very, 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 very pleased. This was really a crash test of this detector because I've taken it on a very difficult site. I was expecting it not to do what it said on the tin. I was expecting it to be very hard to use. I was expecting it to be very temperamental. I was expecting it to be heavier, but it's not too heavy. I mean, I've been out there for now two hours and yeah, I've had enough but then I would have that with the CTX 3030. So, these, you know, that's only just because I'm a feeble old guy. And it found stuff, be it ring pulls and bits of aluminum and aluminum, but it found them and it gave me beautiful 3D pictures and it did the right analysis. And I did testing with real coinage and it did what it said it should do with those as well. And it also does some other things like cover all the ground. And it also really gives me what I think is quite good discrimination. In fact, extremely good discrimination. It's very exciting. The only thing I haven't proven it for is depth. But as it was actually picking up my scoop at two to three foot, I think it's got depth too. Certainly if you're looking for a pot of gold, silver or copper coins two foot down, I think it's going to get them as long as you use the machine right. It's a very simple to use machine in its defaults. It does a pretty good job. Well, it does an extremely good job on its defaults. Switch on, off you go. I'm really wowed by this machine because I can tell you, if I back this to the person that sold it to me and said, oh, you can't get it to work, oh, woe is me, I'm sure I'll get my 10 grand back. Not that I'll do that, but I am not sending this machine back. In fact, you couldn't take it away from me, even if you paid me. I'm really excited to get this on the three hauled fields that I've got access to, and I'm excited to get it on the fields which are just really good fields because I'm scratching the surface of those, and I think. With this, I'm gonna be picking up a lot more stuff for several reasons. Reason one, I'm gonna cover all the ground because the detector actually maps what you're going over. It enables you to make sure you've gone over everything. And as I've seen using this machine, I'm missing at least half. Oh, it's probably more like 80% by the way that I swing. So on a good field, you do wanna cover everything. Two, it's got really great depth. And three, it's got great discrimination and separation. So it is really a pretty fab machine. Well. It certainly seems to be from my two hour test. I've got a lot to go for this machine and I can't wait to get on it. Now I thought I should say, I'm not sponsored to make this review. I haven't contacted Nocta, they haven't paid me, they haven't given me a review machine, nothing. I've bought this machine with my own money. This is not a sponsored review. This is the review of somebody that really didn't want to buy it because he thought it was too expensive and wouldn't work, who's got the machine, finally bit the bullet on the basis of having some hauls to go for, and has tried the machine out and found it pretty amazing. That's my review. The Nocta Invenio is pretty amazing. Coming up in this treasure hunting adventure, we're going to go out searching for treasure with the amazing Nocta Invenio. And we're also going to go searching with the Deus X35, the new all singing, all dancing coil and setup from XP. Well, I'm out on a field, not some lovely beach in California, to test the Nocta on European conditions. And I'm all clobbered up, and I mean, it does feel a bit cruiser this gear because I've got my normal bag and I've got the box control box and I've got the detector which is a little bit fiddly to lie down because it's got a sensor at the bottom of it but anyway to get a hoard we don't care about that we're prepared to put up with a bit of agony or even take someone along to hold some of it but anyway here I am this field I'm going to test it on I have done to death over six years so really it's only going to be seeing what's deep that's a good test for this I'm kind of again not really expecting much because there's no hoard here that I know of anyway and I have taken literally hundreds of coins out of this field and the last few years it's been very, very thin. But that's not the point. This is going to be deep. So let's see what happens when we take it out on this test ride. Also, later on, I'm going to be going over a field that I think has got a hauled, but half of it is available to me. And the other half, which I think has got the hauled on it, is closed to me. So, <laughs> but anyway, we've got to go, haven't we? We've got to go and check it out. We'll see that later. Anyway, on we go. And there she blows, and as you can see, that sensor is magic, or oh, some of the magic anyway, and that's like a GPS for local and um, ground conditions. And there it is propped up because you can't lie down on that because it's all 
got a vision system, it's like a camera, so that's a bit awkward, but we will have to grin and bear it. Off we go. Well, two things. It doesn't get interfered with by pylons because I've got a power right over me, and I've just taken a little bit of metally rubbish from about nine inches. So that's good. And I've only just been going for a couple of minutes, so it's already picking stuff out. And it's giving me lots of little signals, lots of little chirrups, but not anything I'd wanted to dig. But this one was, you know, quite uh, bright and quite strong and pretty deep. And I haven't got it on deep setting, so that's very interesting. Well, I put it into deep mode and the results are pretty amazing. I'm not quite sure what to make of them all, but I think it just says there's a lot of iron in this area, which I know about, but I've never seen it before. Have a look at that. As you'd expect, mountains of iron. Very, very interesting. It's been a tiring hour and I found two bits of rubbish and I've tried out deep mode, which is fascinating. And I think I lost all that because um, the camera crashed, but I just, dug a little signal and I've just gone oh have a look at what's in here well in fact I haven't looked really well in at this yet but it looked like a coin a silver coin it had a cross on it so it's a tiny little there we are there's the cross it's a tiny little it's a tiny little medieval silver coin and I've been over this patch dozens of times with all sorts of detectors never pop this one up that's just great that's not just great that's fantastic that's fantastic and the Noctua Invenio winkled it out I'm really really happy I can tell you're really happy Well, as I'm guessing, I lost most of the footage I've already taken. I'm going to take some more and I'm going to switch the Invenio to deep mode. And I'm going to go over where I just found this tiny little silver coin on the hope of finding a hoard, which won't be there, of course. But anyway, then you can see how it works. It's quite a fascinating picture. So that is what the area around that silver coin looks like in deep mode. <laughs> So that's iron. So, as you can see, there's a lot of iron around here. <coughs> but what I did was I put it into basic mode. And in basic mode, I guess it's much shallower. You see, there's none of that. And that's what I picked out the little silver coin with. So that's all quiet. Apart from there's a little high signal there. So, of course, this is still a Muppet's eye view. But I got a silver coin, a tiny little one in my pocket, to prove that this machine is something special. Because I hammered this piece. <laughs> I don't know what that means <laughs> but I've really hammered this stretch because it's only a few feet from my back door <laughs> so you can imagine every time I got a machine I test it out here every time I fancy a treasure hunt I'm out here looking for a little bit more and I've got lots of wonderful stuff from here just now another little wonderful coin tiny little silver billion coin from 1400s wonderful well I thought I'd come out with the dais and go over the same patch after I got my puff back so I'm doing that and you know, it's a lot lighter and a lot easier going. Cover a lot more ground. I haven't actually found anything. <laughs> but um, I'll push on and see what happens after I do that for about an hour and a half. See if I can turn up anything. It is perfect metal detecting. It's absolutely perfect conditions for metal detecting. The ground is really wet and conductive. So it'll be picking up all sorts of signals that in dry conditions it wouldn't be. But anyway, I think it's going to be Nocturne Venio 1, Deus 1. Have a look at this. Well, I don't know what it is, this could actually be rubbish, but I'm thinking it's something really nice. So, let's have a look. So, that's what I've got, and I'm thinking that's a coin. 
Hoping it's coin, could be a button of course. And it's a bun. Oh, pity. But look at it, love your bun. So, maybe not one all, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a similar sort of target. And Dave's picked it up. So of course there's no doubt the Deus will pick this stuff up. The Deus is an absolutely amazing machine. And the Nocta is turning out to be an amazing machine too. It is really heavy and I don't think I'd be using it just to find coins. I would be shooting with the Deus. And if it looked like I've got a hot spot, out will come the Nocta to see if there's a hoard there. So I think it's very much a professional machine. It's very much a hoard machine. And of course I'm gonna take a long time to learn it. And you won't cover as much ground as you will with the Deus because it will just wear you out if you're like me anyway. But I mean, there's young, hunky chaps that could uh, wield that Nocta no problem all day. But for me, hour and a half, two hours, that was me done. But I wouldn't be using it for normal detecting because there's so much of it. The whole purpose of it, in my mind anyway, at this early stage, is for finding those deep hordes. And we'll be doing a little bit more of that in the next couple of days and see if we can find uh, a hoard with it because I know there's a possibility of a hoard in two places around here. So I'm gonna go and check them both out over the coming weeks. Nice short round ball. Not bad. You would expect anything to find that, frankly, even though it's about six inches down. Well, 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 very foily signal, but it ain't foil. Now, over there, about five feet, is where I found that little hammered with the Nocturne in Venia. So, there's the holes, and here's a new one. And this is what is in it. So I make that Deus 2 in Venio 1. But seriously, look at that. Maybe there's a hold here. So maybe I need to go into Nocta deep mode. This is going to come out beautiful, isn't it? I can't really see that. Let me. You're seeing a better view than me. But that's a proper hammered silver. Probably 14 or 13 hundreds. And there's that cross again. So I'm having an awesome day here. Awesome! <laughs> well, anyway, yes. So two great machines, two great finds, two hours. Not bad. I'm going to concentrate around here and see if I can pull out any more. Philip IV, called Philip the Bell, born in 1268 and ruled to 1314. He was responsible for wiping out the famous Knights Templars. And he did that because basically he was broke and he wanted the money. And they were very rich and very powerful. So he rounded them up, took all their money and executed them all. He was also called not just La Belle, i.e. pretty or fair or handsome, but he was also called the Iron King. He did plenty of nasty things like expel the Jews from France, flay people alive and be at constant war. Because he didn't have any surviving heirs, he was responsible for what turned into be the Hundred Years' War, which was the fight for succession and the control of England and a large chunk of France. So here's one of his coins, the only one I've ever found of his. A lovely piece it is too, and I'm very happy indeed to have recovered it from the ground in such great condition. Now here's a weird piece of pot. Look at this, just lying on the surface. Well, if you've got any ideas what one of these is, please post below. If you know, post below. That's not going to be very modern, I don't think. Unusual. Well, so far the conclusion is this. Not to confine it, so can Deus. Now, Deus is much easier to detect. For one thing, you're not carrying a really heavy box that's separate to it. it makes it a lot easier to dig, carry a, a finds bag, etc. However, now I found that other coin right by the first coin the Nocta found, 
and I found it with the dais, much bigger coin has to be said as well. I'm gonna be back there with a Nocta on deep mode to see if there's a pot of them out of range of normal detectors. And that is what I see the Nocta's real purpose is for. When you've got a hot spot and you're finding lots of the same coin, then you get your Nocta out and you go and see if there's a pot where they're all coming out from. So we'll try that tomorrow and see if there's a pot or if there's not. Now, as far as the score goes for Nocta Invenio versus Deus, I think it's one all. The little button, very good, but I'm covering much more ground with the Deus because it's much lighter. So I'm probably doing 150% more ground per hour than I would be with a heavy Nocta. All in all, I'll say they're even Stevens when it goes for coins in the ground in normal mode. So if you're meaty enough to carry the Nocta, it'll be the same deal. Well, I'm out with the Nocta again, because where I found those two hammers yesterday, I'm thinking, maybe there's a lot more, maybe there's a pot, maybe there's a hoard, who knows? So anyway, I'm out with the Nocta to see if I can find a lump. And I'm trying all the different modes. Got very little experience with this machine, apart from it finding tiny little pieces of silverish stuff, which I just found another little one now, which is not a coin, but it's tiny, tiny, tiny little piece. It picked it up at about four or five inches. Um, so I'm a bit kind of confused not really knowing what I'm doing, trying to get different most to do different things. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But anyway, this is a really powerful machine. It's gonna take a lot of learning. I'm not hauled yet. I've got to say it's mighty fiddly digging, but it seems to be worthwhile. This is a little bit of broken something. It's a something. Bronze. A part of a brooch, maybe. Looks pretty old. I'm very happy with that. So I'm struggling on. I suppose I'll get my technique on how to dig and hold and balance and juggle all this stuff. But that is, for me, the major drawback is the amount of clobber. And you know me, I don't like clobber. I've been running over this field, testing it out when I can, and I think I've got a coin signal here, so I thought I'd run you through it. So this is what the machine is telling me it is. Have a look. Now it says that little dot is an 83. So it's very conductive. And I've been picking up all the iron that my dais has been ignoring for all these years. So we find a lot of that and it's been spot on every time. So under here is that signal. Let me show you what it looks like when you're detecting it. This is me going over it. So you can see nothing else around it. And it's down there at about eight centimeters apparently. So let's go and get it. Well, I missed this bottle top, that's for sure. And it was sort of like four or five inches down. Now in due course, I'll probably be able to spot by the target ID, whether that's a bottle top or not. But on this field, which I have hammered so much, I'm just digging even some of the iron. Continuing the field test of the Deus X35 and the Nocturne Invenio, and I'm going back to where I'm hoping there might be a hot spot of hammered. Now, the Invenio found one there, tiny little one. The Deus found a big one of Philippe Labelle from 1280. Fabulous, fabulous. And I have had another little hammered silver a few years ago, roughly the same spot. So I'm wondering if there is deep down a hoard. Probably not. Couldn't see anything on the Invenio, but I'm a total novice on the Invenio, so even if it was staring me in the face, I probably wouldn't know what I was looking at. So I'm going back there with the dais, and I'm also going to go around for about an hour and a half and see if I can get a lot more than the Invenio, or get the same. Now, I've got the feeling that the dais and the Invenio are pretty equivalent, but for different uh, purposes. The trouble is with the Invenio, it's very, very heavy, and you end up juggling with it. Now, if you imagine you've got that box on your side, you've got... Um, your digger, you've got your detector, and the box is very clumsy, and the inventor you can't really put down because of the way that there's got that special gadget on the back of it. So it's a, a bit of hard work. But I don't really think it's ideal for general hunting. I wouldn't use it for general hunting. I want something very, very light for that. Something that will skim around and find the hot spots, and then you go back with the Invenio and look for you know, deeper stuff in that hotspot. So that's how I'm reading it at the moment. That's what I think about the two. But I'm going to go back now and see how the desk gets on. I'm going to go around roughly the same amount of time. But I will cover a lot more space. It's a lot lighter and it's a lot easier to dig with it. Anyway, let's see what we turn up. So this is a tiny little thing in the hotspot. 
and it was right by a bit of iron but it kind of gave a cranky signal that I dug and this popped out it's not anything in particular but it's a typical deus find with cleaning and out so that's quite impressive I'm always impressed with the deus I've got to say well I've come a long way for this first little find that's a little denier 1600s 1700s so I haven't missed much in the past on this field I've whacked it enough it has to be said so it's been iron and silence and then just this one signal in about 45 minutes and nothing by the hammered hotspot nothing at all So the key advantage that the Deus has is that it doesn't exhaust you. And I can say that the same about the 3030 mine lab, too heavy. And if it was in a hot spot, I think I would go over it with the Deus and then go back over it with the Invenio. Because I think the Invenio is deeper. I got a bit of iron, it must have been two and a half foot down. It was absolutely incredibly deep. Obviously I wasn't going to stop digging. And I went down and 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 down. Half the length of my shovel and then there was a bit of iron. Well in fact a large bit of iron. I didn't bother to go any further. The Invenio definitely has depth. Well now I've got my little hotspot going. I think I've got another coin. Now this is a magnificent 90. And I think it might be quite deep. But we'll have a look. Could be just a bit of old copper. Ball top tin can. All that sort of stuff that let you down. But let's do a live dig. Now... In Venio, live dig would be very difficult because I'd have the case, I'd have my digger, have the metal detector can't put down. Also, it, you can't rest it on anything because of the shape, which is a bit of a, you know, a bit of a bummer, frankly. But anyway, enough of complaining. Let's go get this coin. <laughs> that looks like I missed dug it it's back here maybe I thought that wasn't it on the spade end it was, just a, it was just a stone let's go down past that <laughs> if I can which I can't I think I got it maybe I did maybe I didn't <laughs> it's a big old stone that well, hopefully, hopefully I've got it out. Look this. And there she blows. Oh, I hope that was on camera. So that was the 90 signal. And let's see if we've got any detail. Wow, good old signal for such a small coin. Nope, not going to get anything off that. But anyway, second coin of the day. So that's good. Two coins, same hot spot, about an hour. Well, FYI, guys, 07 on the dais is anthracite. Well, I'm going to start getting blase about these hammers. Got another one, I think. Here it is. Look at this tiny little thing. Think that is a hammered. Well, I mean, you know, a hammered billion as opposed to the hammered copper. Tiny, tiny thing. Yeah, I can see the cross on it. They must have been clipping these things like mad. I mean, maybe they came off in the field. Don't know. But anyway, tiny, tiny little signal right by this hot spot. Deus strikes again. Now, I'm actually already, I've been out here about an hour and a half now, getting a bit tired. But that's because this thing is too warm for me. It's a beautiful day, even though it's December. That'll teach me. But anyway, let's go on. Let's keep focusing on this spot see if I can find some more before my time is up well the Deus picks up the huge lump of iron two foot down to so that's an interesting test for the X35 I've got it on four tones so there's no difference in ability to detect really deep stuff between the two so that's very interesting to know I'm using the large X35 coil and yeah it's great it's so light I love light but down here I think we've got a coin and I didn't sweep this part because the stubble wasn't knocked down. And I'm guessing it's in there. Well, let's see. Yeah. Well, pinpoint of time. Let's have a go.
Well, there it is. Soil is not soft enough to dig it out with the pinpointer. So it's going to have to be the spade. That should be it. In that bit I've just moved. And that's it. Not a coin. A lumpo. Yep, it's a lumpo. Not sure that's aluminium or... I think it's aluminium. Melted aluminium. A very amateurish Roman brooch. <laughs> it's the right shape, isn't it? But it's not. It's not. They didn't make... <laughs> Roman brooches like that. They really didn't. But I will double check just in case. That's what I've said finds a few and far between that's because I've had this field so much over the years so it's worth <laughs> digging pretty much everything live well spade time one-handed spade time if it hasn't fallen out it's not a good sign There it is. A tube. Well, there it is. A piece of copper tube. I found one of my few silver coins around this part, a Napoleon equivalent of an English shilling, a one franc. And I've got a monkey's uncle signal down here. It's got to be, well, <laughs> this absolutely sounds like a coin, but it could be some other high conductive target. It's a 90. And it's as clear as a bell, very, very clearly, to me at least, a coin. So let's go dig it. Now it should be in there. It should be in there. And it isn't. Well, I think we should probably pinpoint it. Is that it? Well, it's going to be a bit of aluminum and aluminum. Dag nabbit. Oh, there it is. Well, I thought I saw some aluminium poking out, but it's not. It's a coin, a lovely coin. Looks like it's got some detail on it as well, but uh, generally don't. So I reckon up the coins, but we are also covering a lot more distance than I would do with the Invenio. Yep, nice coin. So I reckon that's about as much time as I spent yesterday with the Invenio. We got that nice little bronze piece, which is pretty old. But um, I think I'm finding more random finds. And that's what I would kind of expect. I see myself working with the dais to prospect and then working with the Invenio in hot spots to get depth. I might be wrong, but that's the plan. And we'll see whether that pans out in future videos. There's well, something in here. The something is in here. It's not going to be a coin. Not at this rate, anyway. What's that? So I'm guessing that's a round ball. Well, I don't feel like one. Ooh, a button, maybe? piece of crud possibly no I think that's a fired pistol ball well the pinpoint is playing up it's not surprising after the beating I've given it over the years and it wasn't that thing I had in my hand 
It's a little bag sill. Well, I'm out to my Roman patch. And I'm going to give a go with the Invenia because I think there's possibly a hoard here. And also the farmer's hammer is here too, so with a bit of luck I'll find that. But I've forgotten the little harnessy thing, which is not very good anyway. So I'm going to just see if I can cope with it just slung over my shoulder. That's the control box that is. And without that, and I'm going to give it a bash for about an hour and a half, because I think that's how long it takes for me to kind of have my arm fall off in any event. So I'm going to give it a go and see if we can come up with anything. Now I should have cleared the whole spot out earlier on in the year. So anything I find now is in addition to having hammered it for, I don't know, 20 hours or more with the dais. So that will show its paces. So I'm kind of not really expecting to find anything. If I do, it's a bonus. And then after that, I'm gonna go well, hop around with the dais itself um, after my arm has fallen off. I'll then take a bit of a rest and then go around for another couple of hours with the dais and see what I can find. So come along with me and see what I can turn up. Well that was unexpected. I nearly went base over apex. It's actually really boggy now and almost went up to me knees in mud down the end there. And even here, which is my spot, is still quite sinking. So I obviously had a lot of rain, so it's gonna be a bit tricky, but off we go. Well that was a disaster. Oh dear. That field is totally waterlogged and boggy. So I was going up to my calves in mud and I'd managed to get my way in but I was a great deal of difficulty getting back out again and I had to walk a long way and kind of go up to my ankles and more in mud to find a not totally boggy way out. So I was caught in the mire. I could have got stuck there and had to call for help to get a tractor to drag me out. But as it happens, I just about got out by the skin of my teeth and here I am wet and smelling like a damp Labrador with everything soaking wet including the Invenio so I'm gonna sit here and maybe it's gonna clear up and maybe I go out again but I'll probably go out with a dais it's so heavy going underfoot I need something really light not something dragging me under and the Invenio really is as they say in the army a crew served kind of device you really would like someone to be carrying that box because that is really awkward it's not so bad until you have to dig, and then you're in trouble. Deus is really, really good for scanning, and goes really, really deep, it must be said. But if you thought you was onto a hoard, and you weren't picking it up, you would get onto the Invenio and give it a close look to see if you could find anything much deeper. Bryce has got the Invenio, half of the Invenio. I got the other half of the Invenio, and we're about to go in to the woods. In my opinion, the Invenio is crew served, i.e. you need two people to actually service the weapon. And it's going to be doable now because there's two mighty chaps to do all the work. Right, let's go. So the Invenio is booting, and this is its booting. And this is switched on, there's an on switch there. So now this is running. It takes a bit of time to boot, and it's nearly booted, and here we go. Now we're going to run in deep mode, I think that's the way to go. Just look deep, don't care what it is, if it's not obviously iron, we're going to dig it up. Simple as that. So I've got a really deep signal here. And we're digging to Australia. Oh, it's out. I think it's in the middle, yeah. further away from you. Yeah. There, yeah, that's what I thought, around there. Oh. A coin. <laughs> this is in an area where it, all the coins have been found, apart from this one. Bryce strikes. <laughs> Oh, huge Roman. Yeah. At about a foot. Uh, deep. Deep. Good. <laughs> nice. Now we're going to have to cut this in half, this coin, you know. <laughs> Can't keep it. If you want. We're sharing, we're sharing. I'll take the first. Yeah. How about no that? Invenio strikes. 
this is why I paid $10,000 for this machine, because <laughs> I could go on sites which have been detected out and find the really deep stuff and potentially <laughs> the hordes. So I'm still looking for those farmer's hammers, but if I find the occasional Roman while we're going, well, I mean, what am I meant to do? Leave it in the hole? I don't think so. Oh, yes. Oh, we've only been doing it for five minutes. Anyway, yeah. on we go. It was a bit noisy. Yeah. So this is a big, or well not that big, but nonetheless, a Roman nail. Rather nice. Show everybody how deep that hole is. Okay, so yeah, so it's about a foot. And at the bottom of that foot was this little Roman coin. Oh, I dropped it. Oh. This classic one of dropping the coin. I've got these gloves on, so I can't, my fingers don't operate. And there you are, there's a little Roman emperor on the top. So that at a foot, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I should keep all the finds in my pocket. Yeah. So if, if they get lost, it's all my fault. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. And the signal was not really clear, yeah. so. Good. At a foot. Nice. <laughs> yes. Piece of iron. Okay, so this is an iron nail at about a foot. A Roman iron nail, so well worth digging up. I thought it was an irony signal, but it was borderline. And as I wasn't digging, I thought, yes, if you want to dig it, you can dig it. <laughs> so a big Roman nail on the surface. Give a pretty irony signal, but had a little bit of a non irony in there. Okay, swing away, Bryce. And there's your coin. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a gun. Oh, <laughs> silly gloves. I can't yeah. actually. You do the rubbing, I'll do the filming, how about yeah. that? Okay. Look at that. Oh yes. Beautiful. You see the design in it? Maybe the Roman head, the Emperor. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yes. Good. Wasn't Very exactly nice. deep though, was it? <laughs> Didn't prove proves the Invenio can go down yeah. to at least one millimeter, <laughs> yeah, a as well nice. as a thousand millimeters. Yes. The patina is really nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful absolutely one. beautiful. So this is where a load of farmers' hammers have come up. So we're going to be focusing on this bit and see if we can get any more. I was just saying that the Invenio is amazing because I came over multiple times with my Deus, with a lot of parameters, with another detector, and it was just at the surface. <laughs> so I don't know why I can't find it with the Deus. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Let's see if we can find some more. Yeah, of course. What's oh, another one? No. Take a a big, yeah. There was a signal there. Now that was right by a large piece of iron, so maybe it's just one of those things. Deus couldn't pick it up because it saw the iron and didn't see the coin. But anyway, that's the way detectors are. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But anyway, Infinia got it. Wow, look oh, at that. Oh, yes. Look at that. That's amazing. I can take it now. Spike head on the Imperial head. 
Yes. Fantastic. Bryce are brilliant. Well done. This is your detector. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Check. Does some design. I tell you, you got the sight, I got the detector. <laughs> Let's make plenty of money. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Now, I've got to say that this is not sponsored by Nocta. This is completely independently done. So, there you go. Um, I'm not getting paid by Nocta to show what a great machine this is. I could be, though. Come on, Nocta, pay me. Have you got another one? Yeah, a little one. Oh, look at that. That's not so little as the other one. Yeah. In fact, it's a big one. In my eyes, anyway. Look at that. So it's two in the same spot, basically. Yeah. They're on top of each other, give or take. Yes. Wow. Oh, fantastic. Let's have a look. Let's have a look close up. You see, this is the, the only drawback with the Invenio is it's a difficult thing to lug about. Don't move the Invenio. Yes. Oh, oh that's all right. It's, it's safe there now. It's okay. Well, we should clean these up and get nice photographs of them. This is fantastic. So that's four so far. Yeah. Four. four. I'll let you look after that. Good. And let's see if we've got any more in the hole. We never know. Yeah. It's. Or maybe it's just saying. We've got to dig it, haven't we? Give me the detector and then, I, and then you'll be free to yeah. dig a mighty hole. Let's say that's iron, but okay. we might as well give it, a, give it another look. Here's one. It's not showing the same as it was before. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, it might be a very large bit of iron. Yeah. That's that is a coin. I thought it was at the front of that, wasn't it? What? Wasn't it at the front, towards me? Um, just over there, I think. Did you? Oh, I thought it was... More. Okay, don't care. I'm, I'm bad at it. You're bad at it. We're all bad at it. <laughs> yeah, you're all doing the digging, so... You get to choose your spot, I say. Bark. No. Yeah, that's what I thought it was, where you just chopped it. Where you just chopped that gold coin in half. It's at the front there, isn't it? Yeah. Stone. Yeah, what do you got? Oh, 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 give it to me that way, we'll be out of the way of your pinpointer. Yeah. <laughs> Towards me, I'd say. Where that? Yeah, there. Okay. The name. 
Yeah, but there's, there's iron in there as well, isn't it? Oh, it's that blooming big ones. It's that really big head, nail heads. Hobnails, Roman it's hobnails. The shape of a coin, so. Yeah, but it, I, you should dry it over again because I think they might be together. Okay. Yeah, well, you never know. Come on. Because <laughs> it was making our marvellous coin noise. Yep, you're right. Bryce, you're right. Let's get this on the Invenio. Right, go for it. You see that trail we've been down? All the iron, 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 not iron. Okay, let's get digging. The only trouble with carrying the Invenio box is your feet freeze. The only trouble with carrying the Invenio is your feet freeze. But I'm prepared to suffer the freezing toes. Ooh. Right. It's going to be two foot down. Come on. Get the spade out. Ooh. Ooh. It went pink and then you dropped it. Yeah. Pinpointer? Yeah. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Back near the hole. No? No, no. You... That. Don't know what that is. No. That's not going to be it. It is not going to be it. Give it a pinpointer. Oh, I oh, got it. You may or may not have got it. Come over here and I'll shift the mud. Yes. And then. You can put it back, yes. Yeah. You dropped it now? No. I think we have to. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, it's strange. It's a little piece of metal, I don't know. No. We have to check with the. Yeah, throw it back in the hole. Yeah. Yeah, we have that nice sound. Is that a coin? I don't know. It's round? I think so. I don't know. I think it's uh, 
basketball or from fired basketball or something like that. Can't Slam. be. It yeah. can't be. <laughs> yes. I think so. It's heavy. No, no. Not that heavy. No? Not at all. No. But I don't think it is a coin. I think you're right about that. Or not, as the case may be. Yeah. Let me have a look closer. That is a coin. Market ball, mon derriere. <laughs> My ass. <laughs> Say un pièce de monnaie. Yes. Fantastico. Yes. And it's going to be a nice one because it's got lots of dirt on it, which means it's yeah. going to have a great pattern. Yeah, maybe. Hey, 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 I told you it was a coin. Coin number five? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank well, you, Invenio. Well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now we need to find a few gold ones to pay for the bloom thing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's a coin. You're right. Yes! Well, Invenio said it was iron, and it's a big iron Roman nail. Rather oh, lovely. There you are. There it is. It's a coin. Mm -hmm. Nice. Is that a head? I think so. Yeah. Terrific. Number five or number six? Number six. I think. Number six. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and so much, so much iron. Yeah. So much iron. The same hole. Yeah. So the iron didn't totally confuse the Invenio. We spotted it and we got in there and we got it. Yeah. There was a mixture of iron and non-ferrous in the signal mm. and that's what made us dig it. And there it was, brilliant. So this is where it was, this is the iron. Big lump of iron and put, and put that on top of the iron now. Yeah. Roughly. Go, go for it. Impressive, huh? Yeah. So this big old Roman hobnail was saying it was iron, but it just had a little bit of a halo, so we dug it in. Anyway, you got to dig it when there's so much good stuff around, haven't you? I'm not telling Bryce, but I'm loving these nails. They have a bit of a halo, but they say iron, iron, iron. Oh, 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 halo, halo. But, you know, look at the size of that. And that is a 2,000-year-old nail from the Roman Empire. What they were nailing, I don't know. <laughs> yep, that is looking good. Sounding good, anyway. Yes. <laughs> and looking good. Yeah. I agree on your choice of spade placement there <laughs> which is not a good sign because I always get it wrong deep 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 oh pinpot is not getting it no no now have a quick wave over it yes A tiny little one. Ah, uh, oh, I can't hold it in these stupid gloves. Hold on. So, 
hard. I'd take them off, but then I'd freeze. Yeah. There we go. Lovely little coin at, well, probably about six inches. Yeah. Nice. At six inches, and we knew what it was as soon as we got that. Woo, 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 woo. I like that sound. So iron with an aura are these huge Roman nails, which are rather lovely. In the old. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it detected the dais. Ah, ah, disaster. Oh, oh. Good. I'll know what this is. Oh, it's is a it coin, isn't it? It's a coin, isn't it? It's a coin, isn't it? Sure. Un pièce. Un pièce. Un pièce de pièce. Oh. Pièce de money. Yes, I think it's a coin, yeah. Yeah, I think it's... So, yeah. A little minimum. No. Well, when I clean them up, we'll find out what's on them. Yes, fantastic. Good. That's the biggest hole, isn't it? No. Over there. Look at that. They're going. And that was a big derriere hole. <laughs> That's about a foot, isn't it? <laughs> 35 centimetres. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, you pay your money and you hope you get what you paid for. And I think I've got what I've paid for. And it's great to be out here with Bryce doing all the hard digging down a foot for a little coin like this. Yeah. Let's look at this. Oh, come on, put your hand in the hole. Yeah. Show everybody how deep that is. Yeah. That was right at the bottom of that. A little copper coin. Yeah. We have to clean. You have to clean that up. No yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Seven or eight. Yes. Something like that. Seven, seven or eight. Eight. Eight, I think. So. Yeah, seven or eight. Yeah. Hordulant. So nine coins. So like one every twenty minutes. Well maybe not. We've been going at it for for four hours. Nine in four hours. One every thirty minutes. Amazing. Look at that. Well done in Venio. Now this has got an interesting one. This is the first one we found. Yeah. I don't know what it's got on it, but it's interesting. Oh, I can't barely bend my fingers are so cold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The big one. Thanks for the digging, Bryce. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. So to finish off a brilliant day, I'm on a field with Bryce's friends and treasure magnet Aurelian.
and I got a bit of a thimble. There you go. Really nice piece. Thought I got myself a Celtic there, but it's just a nice button. Have a look. Rather lovely, isn't it? It's old, but it's still a button. Sad to say, but you can see from that detail what I thought that might be, but rather nice. It's hard to judge all the gunge, but I think that's a shot round ball. Might not be, might just be a bit of round crud. But I think that's what that is. It's a shot round ball. Not funny much, but I've got a coin down here. Or I'm a monkey's uncle. This is so easy to dig. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So that should be out. You'd hope anyway. <laughs> it is. Pinpoint of time. That's it. It's a heavy lumpo. I don't know what of though. So this is the lumpo. And it's a Ooh, could be a badge. That looks like a pattern. <clears throat> I don't know what that is. It's looking like it's got some sort of design on it. So that's going to go in the pocket. Maybe it's a piece of furniture ornamentation. You know, like the lip off a leg. Anyway, like that. Don't know what it is, but I'll find out. Now I can't see, but I'm hoping that, that that isn't a seal and that that's actually a bit of a Roman coin. But I can't actually see from this thing. And if it is a Roman coin, it might be a bit of a denarius. I don't know. Probably just a lead seal, but I'm hopeful. Strong possibility of a coin under here. It's in the 80s, no foily sound. No aluminium diagonal on it, or vertical, I should say. I'm guessing that's out. Let's have a look. Hmm, still there. Let's have to get this bit. Whoopla! <clears throat> well, that means it's fallen in the hole, which is a good sign of it being heavy anyway. Ooh. If it's not in there, I'll be surprised. <laughs> There you are. Well, it's copper or bronze, or maybe better. But is it a coin? No, it's a lump. And that's a thimble. It's thimble day today. Yay. Not a terribly old one, but looking rather black, which I'm hoping means it might be silver. I think it could be. That would be tremendous if it is. But it's still a thimble and we like them. We like them a lot. That's really nice. It's nice if it's copper but it's nicer if it's silver.
this is a massive signal, 95. I just wondered if that was it. Well, it certainly looks like it could have been it. Let me run the detector over it. Nope. No, I'm talking rubbish. It is here, as I thought. I'll take another spoonful out. Right, that should be, what's that? Nope. Ugh, hey. Okay, so it's in here. Oh, look at the size of that coin. Look at the size of that coin. That's got to be, I don't know what it, that's been dealing with small coins all day. That's not Napoleon Trois. I don't think it is. No, it's not Napoleon Trois. It's nothing like a Napoleon Trois. It's a Louis the Whatnot. I don't know, I don't know. Wipe it on my pants. I should wipe it on Bryce's jacket. He won't notice, he's only standing right here. It's a Louis. It's got to be a Louis. But which one I don't know. There you go, this is how you do it. Can you see? See, as soon as I said I was going home, it's a Louis. You find a coin. Yeah, I think it's a Louis. Louis the seventeenth, say. Yeah. Which is the one that got his head cut off? Sixteenth or seventeenth? I can never remember the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Louis the sixteenth. Of course. Of course, it was Louis the sixteenth. Yeah. Oh, I knew this. So this is him, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Louis the decapitated. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> Hurrah! Oh yeah, it's the it's the one with the crown on it and the and the shield. Yeah. I yeah. Think, yeah. What's that one called? One soul. Ah, soul, single soul, un yeah. soul. Très bon. He knows his souls, this man. Here we go. Surface fine. A few feet away from that soul. A half soul. Don't know what it is to be honest with you. That looks Roman. That's Roman. That is Ra Roman. 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 Oh, Roman. Roman. Un demi Roman. Come on, you've got to come and see it. Yeah. You can get back to your bit of foil. Ha ha ha. How about, how about that? One minute. Two big bronzes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it's from. Surface find as well. Oh. This is my happy face. It's a big one. You bring me your own luck, you do. Today. Thank you, Bryce. And always. You remember, you're the person that first brought me to a Roman coin. Yeah. Look at that. Very nice. That's, that's an as, isn't it? A S. An ass. Yes. Demi ass. Half ass. Yeah, now it is, anyway. Do you, that must, they must have cut that, right? Yeah. Hmm. These Romans. Sorry, I'm not doing this right. That was a surface find, and that was a Roman. I mean, how amazing is that? A Roman surface find, and a big one at that. <laughs> this is a, this is, oh, I can say a Roman, <laughs> I'd be so lucky, but this is a few feet on from the Roman, and a few feet on from the Louis coin. Ooh. I went straight to it, and it's another coin. Is that it? Oh, this is looking like another Roman. Or a button. No, it's a coin. And I don't know what coin that is. It looks like it's got two axes on it. Hold on, let me take a closer look. Stay away from my patch with your detector. <laughs> I mean, what do you reckon? No, ah, it's, it's, it's a billion. No, it's a denier tournoi. You have the double oh, yeah, tournoi a single. and the denier tournoi. Oh, it's got a cross on it. This is a hay with two leaf flowers. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Okay, if cool. You... Three copper coins in six places, all from different eras. Yeah. So this one's 1500, 1600, yes. and then we had a Roman, and then we had a 18th century one. Yeah. I like this spot. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live here. <laughs> I'm going to set up camp. <laughs> I was feeling sorry for myself earlier, not a find, and then suddenly I'm in the money. 
or as they say out here, dollar money, dollar argent. So you've got to dig it all, but at the end of the day, when you're knackered and you're getting foily signals, you don't dig it all. Then up comes Bryce behind you and digs it up because he's fit and strong and young. And it's a Roman coin. So my little bit of foil, and I tested it on deep and it said it was foil. It's this Roman coin and he's given it back to me because it's my coin really. And it's his job to dig up my finds. But look at that, that's fantastic. Thank you for giving it back to me. And it's a fabulous condition. Yeah. See that? That's absolutely mint. A little yeah. tiny little coin. I feel rotten now for missing that. It's about only the third thing I said was a bit of foil and I left alone. But that will learn you. Yeah? Fantastic. Look how tiny it is. No wonder it came up like foil. It's absolutely fantastic condition. Okay. Well done, Bryce, for following up behind me. Yeah. Covering my derriere. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful one. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you. I think we share that one because at the end of the day I found it and Bryce thought, I'm going to go and I'm going to dig that up. It's going to be a Roman coin. And he did and it was. So it's a 50-50. He wouldn't have gone there if I hadn't have done it. I reckon. <laughs> Maybe. I should just dug this hole, which means it's 16 times bigger than if I would have dug it. And the coin is here. Now something sharp is sticking in my finger. Oh, strike a light. Oh, look at that. Oh, he said dropping it. Do you want to have a look? Rice, this is what we found. What's that? It's a buckle of some sort, I should think. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> nice. Really nice. Don't know. No idea either. No. I mean, it looks like. It's very nice. <laughs> It's looking like it might be modern, but it's actually could be old. I think it is probably old. Never seen yeah, anything yeah. quite like that. Excellent. Oh, we love this field. Oh, I love this field. I got a nice signal. Well, it's not a nice signal. It was a tiny deep signal. Yeah. And I started digging it and I said, Bryce, I'm going to be all day. How about you give it a go? So he's dug half of the channel tunnel there yeah. and it came out here. So it's here somewhere. So let's go and get it. What do you reckon? What was it coming out? What's, what's the signal? Oh, the number on it. 72. 72, that's got to be a coin. Yeah. <clears throat> this is your wedding ring finger, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, yeah. And it's a nut button. It's a it's one of those flaming bolt heads that we've been finding all day. Or maybe not, I don't know. What is it? It's a, I don't know, off of a thimble. I don't know. It's so deep though. Oh, it's got a screw thread on it. So I have no idea what it is, but it's got a screw thread on it by the looks of it. So we've been screw threaded. So this is a guy that's digging every signal for sure. Look at all these lovely coins. Fantastic condition. Absolutely fantastic condition. Not a, what, is this a this is a hammered silver? No. No? Copper. Oh copper. Beautiful. Oh look at the condition on that. Look at the condition. Amazing. Sixteen forty. You see me scrape away at Rob's old ones. Well there you go. That's how they look like when they come out of this field. Fantastic. Collectible. Fantastic. No. Merci beaucoup. No, yeah. So that was an awesome, awesome day of detecting. Nine plus two. So what's that? I can't even think. Eleven Roman coins. Just, just a fabulous day. Anyway, off back home for a nice dinner. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and like. See you again soon. Bye now.